Hey, NPC family. I love you and I miss you. I'm looking forward to being with you on Sunday. This Sunday, we're going to be looking at Psalm chapter 1, which presents a contrast on the one hand between the righteous man and on the other hand, the wicked man. The righteous man, it describes as someone who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on it day and night, who's like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in its season and whose leaf doesn't wither. And maybe that description feels uh, far away from you today, delighting in God's law, meditating on it day and night, being like a well-watered, fruitful tree. Maybe that feels like it's a million miles off. Maybe you feel weighed down with sin and shame. Maybe God's law to you feels anything but a delight because of the weight of condemnation you feel through it. Maybe rather than feeling well-watered and fruitful, you feel dry and barren. What I want to remind you of today is how the New Testament defines the righteous man. Listen to how Paul talks about it in 2 Corinthians 5.21. For our sake, he, God, made him, Christ, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. You see, Christ took our sins upon himself in his body on the cross, and what we receive through faith in him is his righteousness. Luther called this a wonderful exchange. Listen to how he puts it. That is the mystery which is rich in divine grace to sinners, wherein by a wonderful exchange, our sins are no longer ours, but Christ's. And the righteousness of Christ, not Christ's, but ours. He has emptied himself of his righteousness that he might clothe us with it and fill us with it. And he has taken our evils upon himself that he might deliver us from them. In the same manner as he grieved and suffered in our sins and was confounded, in the same manner we rejoice and glory in his righteousness. You see, the wonderful truth is that if you are in Christ, no matter how you feel, no matter what you've done, you have been clothed with his own righteousness. Isaiah says that all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment, that in ourselves, even our best efforts at righteousness, they're like filthy rags. But in Christ, we have been clothed with the perfect, spotless, without blemish righteousness of Christ. And that righteousness can't be stained by our sin and our shame. And that's the hope that you and I have uh, today. That's good news for sinners like us. We're going to be reflecting on that more on Sunday, and so I look forward to doing that with you. And I want to just say a word about some of the events that went down in our nation's capital yesterday. You know, as Christians, our hope isn't ultimately in democracy itself, or in a peaceful transition between rival administrations, or in a particular party winning a majority in Congress and in the White House, or even in an orderly and civil and honorable citizenry, as good as any of these things might be. Now, our hope ultimately is in the fact that God is reigning over all of these things, and we rest in his benevolent rule. Listen to how Daniel chapter 4 talks about God's reign, verses 34 and 35. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? You see, from the perspective of heaven, everything is going 
just as planned and we can rest in that knowledge no matter how turbulent things may get out there. Now, as we look forward to Sunday, we will have services at 8.30 and 10.30. So if you haven't yet, let me encourage you to sign up for that. I look forward to being with you or joining with you on the live stream if you're joining us that way. And remember, no tumultuous political uprising, no global pandemic, no mountain of sin of mine or yours can do the least to shake God's throne in heaven or to disturb his plan of salvation for those who are in Jesus Christ.